Welcome to Canada and the world. The content of the briefing includes. Halifax police say arrests made following unsanctioned student gathering. Royal family website targeted in Russian cyber attack. Current rates will tempt some mortgage pros to recommend variable options, one broker warns. Homan defeats Einarsson to claim points bet invitational title. Ilya Samsonov returns to Leafs net with no hard feelings after salary skirmish. Halifax police say arrests made following unsanctioned student gathering. The Toronto Star. Police in Halifax have made arrests and issued summary offense tickets following an unsanctioned student gathering in the city. The police have asked people to stay away from certain streets due to the size of the crowds. While the police did not provide an estimate of the crowd size or the number of arrests made, they stated that they were focused on community safety and quality of life issues. Neighborhood disturbances could result in charges, including criminal ones. Last month, Dalhousie University and the Halifax Regional Municipality announced the launch of a joint task force to address unsanctioned street gatherings in the city's south end. Royal Family website targeted in Russian cyber attack. The Sydney Morning Herald. The official website of the British royal family was targeted in a cyber attack for which Russian hackers have claimed responsibility. Killnet, a Russian hacker group, carried out a denial-of-service attack on the website, causing it to go down for approximately an hour and a half. The group has been known to carry out similar attacks on countries supporting Ukraine. Although no access was gained to the site or its content, the attack caused disruption and led to the website being slow to load at times. Buckingham Palace declined to comment on the attack. Current rates will tempt some mortgage pros to recommend variable options, one broker warns. The Globe and Mail. Mortgage brokers in Canada are being encouraged to push variable rates over fixed rates, despite the recent upswing in the popularity of the latter. Ron Butler, founder of Butler Mortgage, warned that the higher borrowing cost of fixed-rate mortgages could tempt brokers to favor variable rates and the higher commission they attract. Mortgage brokers' compensation is usually based on commissions paid by lenders. Homan defeats Einarsson to claim points bet invitational title. CBC. Rachel Homan defeated Carrie Einarsson to win the points bet invitational title in Ontario. Homan's team used a 3.9th end to break a tie and secure the victory. The win earned Homan's team $50,000. Homan missed the team's season opening win in September while on maternity leave, with Heather Nedahan stepping in as skip. Einarsson's team earned $26,000 as the runner-up. The points bet invitational is the first season of Champions event of the season. Ilya Samsonov returns to Leafs net with no hard feelings after salary skirmish. The Toronto Star. Toronto Maple Leafs general manager Brad Treliving and goaltender Ilya Samsonov have a professional relationship despite their first meeting taking place in court during salary arbitration over the summer. The arbitration saw Samsonov receive a one-year, $3.55 million deal, bringing him to unrestricted free agency in July. Samsonov had a successful season last year, becoming the Leafs' number one goalie and performing well in the playoffs. The Leafs are now deciding who will be Samsonov's backup, with Joseph Wall and Martin Jones both in contention. Enjoy a frugal feast with this dividend portfolio. The Globe and Mail. The frugal dividend portfolio has consistently performed well over the years by investing in low-volatility dividend stocks. The portfolio selects the 10 stocks with the lowest positive price-to-earnings ratios from a list of the 50 dividend stocks with the lowest volatilities. Rebalancing the portfolio quarterly rather than monthly still generated strong returns, with an average annual gain of 13.6% over a 23.5-year period. The best results were obtained by annually rebalancing the portfolio starting in January, with an average annual gain of 14.7%. Walter Borden's The Last Epistle of Tytrope Time is a retrospective of the veteran actor's life, and a reason to smile. The Globe and Mail. Walter Borden, the 81-year-old Canadian actor-playwright, presents his solo show, The Last Epistle of Tytrope Time, at the Tarragon Theatre. The play, which Borden has been writing and reworking since the 1970s, is described as semi-autobiographical and explores themes of queerness and being black. Borden's performance is engaging, and the production is visually striking, with video projections and sound design adding depth to the storytelling. While the poetic style of the writing can be challenging at times, Borden's performance shines through. Canada names roster for inaugural WXV Women's Rugby Tournament in New Zealand. CBC. Canada coach Kevin Ruett has named his roster for the new WXV Women's 15th Rugby Tournament, choosing 21 players from the squad that finished fourth at the World Cup last November. Manitoba NDP leader rallies troops, Liberals promise help for newcomers. The Toronto Star. 
Manitoba NDP leader Wab Kinyu is urging supporters to not take the party's lead in opinion polls for granted and to work to get out the vote for Tuesday's election. Recent polls suggest that the NDP is ahead of the progressive conservatives, especially in Winnipeg. Kinyu criticized the progressive conservatives for campaign ads that use the remains of two indigenous women as political props. The Tories have said that a search for the remains carries too much risk from asbestos and other toxic materials. Kieran Lum fifth in Elite Men's Mile, Top Canadian at First World Road Running Championships. CBC. Canadian runner Kieran Lumb came close to setting a new Canadian record in the Elite Men's Mile at the First World Athletics Road Running Championships. Lumb finished fifth with a time of 3 minutes 56.98 seconds, less than one second behind the Canadian record of 3.56. Lumb admitted that he did not run an a race and could have made better tactical decisions, but he still managed to achieve a personal best. Lumb, who turned professional in April, has been setting personal bests throughout the season, including a time of 3 minutes and 52.62 seconds in the mile. His coach, Andy Powell, believes that Lumb has the potential to break the Canadian outdoor mile record of 3 minutes and 50.26 seconds. At the same event, Ben Flanagan finished 12th in the men's 5K with a time of 13.34. Meanwhile, Ethiopia's derived Welteji beat Faith Kipiagon to set a new women's world record in the mile with a time of 4 minutes and 20.98 seconds. Hello, viewers. It's your friendly neighborhood Six Doctor here, bringing you the latest news from the Six Dimensions. Strap in, because we've got some interesting stories today. First up, we have a report from Halifax where police have made arrests and issued tickets following an unsanctioned student gathering. Now, I don't know about you, but I can only imagine what kind of wild party that must have been. But let's not forget, kids, safety first. In cyber news, it seems the British royal family's website was targeted in a Russian cyber attack. Talk about a clash of the titans. The hackers claimed responsibility, and while no access was gained, it did cause some disruption. I guess even the royals aren't safe from cyber mischief. Moving on to Canada, mortgage brokers are being encouraged to recommend variable rates over fixed rates. Apparently, the higher commission is too tempting for some brokers. I can just picture them rubbing their hands together, thinking about those sweet, sweet commissions. But hey, it's all about the money, right? In sports, Rachel Homan defeated Carrie Einarsen to claim the points bet invitational title. It sounds like a nail-biting match, with Homan's team securing the win in the ninth end. And let's not forget the $50,000 prize money. I wonder if they're accepting new team members? I could use a little extra cash myself. Speaking of sports, Ilya Samsonov, the Toronto Maple Leafs goaltender, has returned to the net after a salary dispute. It turns out he had a successful season last year and despite the arbitration drama, he and the Leafs' general manager seem to have a good working relationship. Ah, the drama of professional sports. Now, let's get a little frugal with our investments. The frugal dividend portfolio has been consistently performing well by investing in low-volatility dividend stocks. Who knew being frugal could pay off so handsomely? Maybe I should try that with my lunch money. In the world of theater, 81-year-old Canadian actor-playwright Walter Borden is wowing audiences with his solo show, The Last Epistle of Tightrope Time. It's a semi-autobiographical piece that explores themes of queerness and being black. Borden's performance is engaging, and the production is visually stunning. It just goes to show that age is just a number. Moving on to sports, Canada has named its roster for the inaugural WXV Women's Rugby Tournament in New Zealand. It's great to see women's rugby getting the recognition it deserves. I can't wait to see Canada show the world what they're made of. In politics, Manitoba NDP leader Wab Kinyu is rallying supporters to get out and vote in Tuesday's election. He's not taking the party's lead in opinion polls for granted, and he's urging his troops to work hard. Meanwhile, the progressive conservatives are under fire for their campaign ads, which Kinyu criticized for using the remains of indigenous women as political props. That's definitely a low blow. Last but not least, we have some impressive running news. Canadian runner Kieran Lumb came close to setting a new Canadian record in the elite men's mile at the World Athletics Road Running Championships. He finished fifth with a time of 3 minutes 56.98 seconds, just shy of the record. Not bad for someone who turned professional just a few months ago. Keep an eye out for this rising star. Well, that's all the news for today, folks. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about these stories? Do you have any frugal investment tips? And who's your favorite rugby player? Let's keep the discussion going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team.
These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.